Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1210, Calculus 1, for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Uh, we are starting a new unit, uh, sort of the final unit for Calculus 1 here, about integration. Uh, we actually saw a little bit of that last time as we talked about indefinite integrals, uh, indefinite integrals, aka antiderivatives. Uh, Chapter five um, is going to start developing the ideas behind what's known as a definite integral and show that the definite integrals we talk about in this chapter are related to the indefinite, indefinite integrals we talked about at the end of the last chapter. Now, uh, prior to jumping into what an integral is, a definite integral, um, it's actually worth our time to develop uh, the notation of summation. Uh, for functions, that is, adding things together, are sometimes called sigma notation. Uh, sigma here is going to stand for sum. And so the idea is this. If we have a sequence of numbers, so we just have the list of numbers, um, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, etc. So uh, th this could be any sequence. It could be just the counting sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It could be the sequence of primes, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. It could be the Fibonacci sequence, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, whatever. We just have a sequence of numbers, and we want to talk about adding those numbers together. So when you see an expression like this right here, this sigma notation, it looks like this Greek letter sigma, which you might see around a college campus, maybe for a fraternity or sorority or something like that. Um, sigma, it kind of looks like an E, but uh, this this cap, this symbol right here, sigma, uh, it is essentially the Greek alphabet equivalent of a capital C. And that C is gonna stand for sum, because uh, we're adding together things here. And so let's talk about the anatomy of this sigma notation here. So whenever you see the sigma, that means we're gonna add some stuff together, we get a sum. What are we adding together? Well, we're going to add together this sequence, uh, a sub i. Uh, these are summands, the things that get added together, or sometimes we call these the terms of the sum. All right. Uh, here at the bottom, you're going to see this. Uh, you're going to see a character right here. This here, it's an i here. Uh, this is going to be a variable. It's often called the index. Uh, hence why we used an I right there. And this thing is going to act like a dummy variable. It's going to keep track of where you are in the sequence. Um, it, it's going to represent a, a generic placeholder of what could be inside of the sum right here. Um, if I was to use a computer science analogy here, this letter I is like the variable of like a for loop, um, if, if that makes any sense to you. Um, and so this number right here, M, uh, this is going to be our initial value. Uh, this is the number that I starts at. And then this number on top, I can't really see it anymore. This number on top is going to represent our terminal value. That is, it's the value that it stops at. So our sum will range from M to N. Uh, let me get this out of the way. No, uh, certainly pause the video right now if you need to here. Oh. Terminal volume, what the junk does that even mean? Try that again, uh, terminal value there. And so if I get this out of the way for a sec, uh, we have this sum uh, of the terms a, i, where i goes from m to n. And so you see that there's this starting term, m and m. So m represents where it starts and n represents where it ends. And the i just kind of keeps track of where you are along the way. And so this is going to be the sum that goes from AM all the way up to AN. Uh, let's like look at some specific examples to see what's going on here. So if you see a sum, so sigma here means sum. So if you take the sum, uh, just look in this first one, of course, we're going to take the sum where I ranges from one to four and we add up I squared. So if we were to break this up into pieces, what this means is we're going to take one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus one of my favorite games as a kid, four squared. Uh, and so we go from one to four in this sum, We uh, and we range over all the possibilities of i, and so I, we just take together the sum of squares. And so we can simplify the sum, of course, because one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is awesome. Uh, so we get this, 
And so let's see, one and nine makes 10, four and 16 makes 20. So this sum will add up to be 30 right here. Uh, but mostly what I care about right now is we understand that this sigma notation represents this expansion right here. Uh, for the next one, we're gonna write, we're gonna take the sum of i as i goes from one up to n. And so we're gonna go one plus two plus three plus four plus five. How long does this keep on going? Uh, we're supposed to go up to n. Well, n's a num as a number. It's a variable we haven't specified yet. So sometimes we have to do dot 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 to let you know how far we're going. We're gonna go up to n right here. So you get one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus dot 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 up to uh, n here. And so these ellipses that you see between the plus, the two pluses here, uh, these ellipses are just representing that the pattern will continue on um, in the, the pattern will continue using the trend that's already been established here. And sometimes these dot, dot, dots can be extremely ambiguous, uh, absolutely ambiguous. And the purpose of the sigma notation is to try to remove the ambiguity so we know exactly what we mean by the pattern. Uh, because one can sometimes get trapped uh, in a pattern and not know what the next step is. So, I mean, for example, if I give you the pattern one comma two dot dot dot, it's like, um, what's the next number? Uh, is it like one, two, three, four, five, right? Is it just counting numbers? Uh, maybe just increment, it just increases by one each time. Uh, maybe it's like one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. Maybe it like doubles each time. Or who knows, we might have like some type of Fibonacci growth going on here. Uh, the issue is when you don't offer enough terms, it's it's too difficult to know what the pattern's gonna be. So it's always a good idea when you have a pattern that you list a lot of terms so that the, the reader can know exactly what you're talking about. But it honestly, no matter how many terms you list, there's always a level of ambiguity whatsoever. Uh, so it's, it's important to have a general form like right here. Uh, we just represent a function for the that represents the next term in the sequence. Now, one thing that's important to notice when it comes to these sigma notations, the the index or the dummy variable, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. Um, we can use the symbol I, we could use the symbol J, we can use the symbol K. This is some of the most common uh, symbols used for the dummy variable here, but the index it's just a it's just a letter. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's not sort of overloaded in its meaning later on. Also, there's nothing that requires our sequence or sum here to start at one. If we want to start counting at zero, if that's appropriate, we could do that. If we want to start counting at 12, we, we, we could take the sum of the 12th term up to the 20th term. If that's appropriate, we can do that. And this notation's built for that type of thing. So if we take the sum where j ranges from zero to five of this sequence, we would take two to the zero plus two to the one plus two to the square uh, plus two third uh, to the three, two to the fourth and two to the fifth. And so we can compute each of these one, two, four, eight. You probably know your uh, you probably know your powers of two if you like to play the game 24. 2048, assuming you're any good at the game, right? Uh, so we get one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32. That kind of looks like a three squared, 32 there. Um, if we add those all up, that adds up to be 63. And again, the specific number is not of much interest to us at the moment. It's about understanding what does this sigma notation even mean. And so for this last one right here, uh, we're gonna take the sum of our K ranges from one to N. Again, the dummy variable doesn't really matter. We end up with one plus a half plus a third, plus a fourth. Uh, you don't have to write out every single term under the sun, but just, just enough so that's clear to everyone what exactly is the pattern. Uh, the last term in this sum is gonna be one over N, uh, which is this terminal value on the top right there. Um, can we go the other way around? Can we find um, a compact sigma to represent the sum of, of, of a big sum of some kind, right? So we have like this one right here, two cubed plus three cubed plus dot, dot, dot up to N cubed. Uh, we're supposed to figure out what the pattern means at this moment. Well, I see a bunch of cubes that are adding together. So a very natural candidate would be something like this. We take Sigma where I ranges from what's the first term in the sum. Uh, well, that's going to look like a two. Then we go up to the biggest one, N, and we're adding up together I cubed. So that's a possibility. Uh, that gives us 
that gives us um, a sum of these things. But it turns out this is not a unique way. There, there, there's more than one way you can actually represent this sum. Another way is, I'm gonna use a different variable. So again, the if you change the name of the variable, it doesn't make much of a difference. But if you take k equals one and you wanna go up to n minus one, hmm, how does that work? Well, you could take k plus one uh, cubed. And if you think about how that expands, right, if you take k equals one, you're gonna get one plus one, which is uh, cubed, that's a two cubed. Uh, then you're gonna get two plus one, three cubed. And then this will proceed all the way up to n minus one plus one cubed. If we simplify this thing, we get back the original uh, sum that we were looking for. Uh, this second example right here is what's known as a uh, index shift. Um, this would be like the same thing as performing a, uh, a horizontal shift to a graph, uh, we can lower uh, we can lower the initial value and also the, the terminal value. We can lower the range of this sum by one, but then each variable would have to increase by one. Uh, it's the idea if you wanna move left, you gotta add one to the function. If you wanna move right, you have to subtract one from the variable. You have to, you have to, uh, what, what does Lightning McQueen say? You have to, you know, you have to turn right to go left. Uh, it was just as confusing for him as well. And so uh, try try coming up with some sums on your own and uh, write them up as a sigma notation. We'll talk some more about the these, these sigmas next time, uh, some properties we can use to compute them more simply. Uh, see you then.